Okay, welcome back. Uh, right now we will have Mr. Thomas Lacrigion, CEO of, of Atomic Intelligence, presenting to us um, voice, fingerprinting, and recording. Thank you very much. Hey. Okay. The start. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, it's not font which I uh, use for a presentation, so it may go a little bit from the lettering side. Uh, I need this. <laughs> I know that I'm missing something. Okay. I'll give you a brief overview of what we will cover. I'll talk a short, uh, like a CBS type of the slide, uh, corporate bullshit about us, and then we'll start about uh, voice fingerprinting, uh, multiple speaker separations, etc., etc. What we tried, what we succeed, and what we didn't succeed, and what are some of the next steps we are trying to achieve. So, as a company, we do data for last two something decades from the people side, and as a company itself, like last seven years and uh, five years in Croatia, respectively. Uh, Organizational-wise, we did set up an environment to be a consulting and some, let's say, implementation-based versus uh, what we are trying to achieve to have our internal uh, development and plus internal research. And research as such goes both uh, below the consulting side and um, development side so that we can either implement or do a research task for a customer or research tasks for our internal development itself. One of the goals is that in uh, 2023, this is what I already covered with my guys, is that we will try to focus and switch from the classical consulting on one side to be more R&D driven, so that we try to focus on building a new type of data products. Okay, now, that's, that's being said from CBS side, now let's start a little bit about speech. So there is quite a lot of evolution over uh, ASR, uh, TTS, and similar namings. So I'll do a little bit of glossary, what we really mean by each of those. ASR as a speech recognition, automatic one, TTS, text-to-speech, so all of those components. And then we use some of the metrics for measuring quality of the results, like uh, word uh, error um, uh, rate. You have CP. W-E-R, which is essentially the same type of calculation, but it's used for multi-speaker environments so that you don't track across everybody who is talking, but only on a single speaker metrics. Besides that, you have a classical, at the end, diarization, error as well, because you would like to see how accurately did you transcribe each of those talks. So like you type your diary or you uh, do a transcript of every person separ separately. Uh, and everything starts with voice activation. So voice activation essentially is the fingerprinting of the person. So you will try to find appropriate information or number of the people who are talking, etc., so that you know how you are splitting those. There are some issues on the market uh, or e on uh, solutions which are currently present because um, those who are focusing on a wave type of application, uh, it, they have an issue with number of unknown speakers when you are starting. You, if you want to have something which is a real time, you don't want to know in advance that there are four persons or uh, 55 or two. You need to have something dynamically scaling and uh, working on your diarization, side or ASR side, depending what you want to achieve. Now, our motivation started uh, with the issue how automatic speech recognition can be applied. We have some of our internal products where we also want to achieve uh, understanding of the voice beside understanding of the text, video, etc., etc. We wanted to bring a uh, voice element as well. Uh, ASR on a single person or a single channel is something which is well already discovered and researched. There are some issues with translation or, uh, let's say, uh, with the speech-to-text part depending on um, uh, availability of some of the languages, depending if they have some additional issues, or like majority of available speech-to-text algorithms have an issue with um, uh, if a um, speaker has some type of illness uh, or if he has aphasia, like a, a uh, stroke, etc., etc., they start to talk a little bit different and then algorithms can't recognize, recognize that, uh, essentially what they are uh, talking and then what you'll get as a physical output. Now. From the technology sphere, uh, there is also other element called speech-to-text, 
which you are covering, and there are applications which are already using a speech to text. So I know that yesterday we talked, well, we, uh, we did see a talk about Siri and how Siri approach. So when you have uh, a voice, it's nothing more than an additional channel which is conveying some of information for, for you, which then you can act. So it can be a text, it can be just in your application clicking on some buttons, or you can talk with an application to do some work for you. And this is how speech to text started to emerge. And uh, you started uh, lately, well, by lately I mean in September this year, uh, in one of the conferences, uh, we got quite a few really good research papers related to multiple speaker segmentation, but none of them is still achieving all the goals. So I think that uh, one of the presentation just before this one in one of the uh, other ro uh, rooms also focused on a similar aspect, how to do and how to recognize multiple persons speaking and trying to separate each of those elements in a separate channel. Now this, in, um, in not just in theory, but this is called a cocktail party example. Uh, cocktail party uh, is, at some elements, it's easy sol solvable, but from the other side, if you have a single track or a single channel, single microphone like I have it, this becomes an issue because you, you are getting uh, more uh, compressed data and you don't have that uh, 3D space availability that you can position and differently then track uh, persons in the environment. If you have a multiple microphones, this becomes a little bit more trivial issue than when you have a single environment for or a single microphone for collecting a voice. Now, when we started to work with this one, uh, we started with a single speaker issue. Relatively easy solvable. Uh, our region has quite a lot of issues in uh, speech-to-text recognition. Uh, some region has more, like we have Zagore in Croatia, we have Niche <laughs> here. So they are not a classical language or uh, let's say official language. They have something which goes a little bit out of uh, normal language definition and it becomes issue for any NLP type of the tasks. So on, uh, we, from the use cases, uh, besides having multiple speakers, you may have multiple speakers talking at the same time. This becomes even greater issue because when they are talking at the same time, you get compress uh, compression, you get overlapping of the talks, and you get noise, you can, you can get uh, a lot of additional artifacts in that element. Uh, one additional, let's say, motivation is besides using this in uh, environment uh, for our products, is that we started to think how we can use this for speeding up any type of online meetings. So uh, let me ask you one first question. Who heard about advances from NVIDIA for video streaming over online meetings? What they approached and what, cool. Well, this is good, we have two. <laughs> so what NVIDIA approached is a, essentially a deep fake model. Uh, that they will take a facial feature of the person from each side or multiple sides of your teams. They will send this as a fingerprint of the person and then they will just uh, capture movement of uh, specific elements, your mouth, eyebrows, etc., etc., and then just deep fake it on the other side. Now you're moving just some small elements and your throughput is not any more relevant because you send small data. And this is also something we are uh, thinking about. If you are able to do a really good speech to text, it means that uh, you can also send a fingerprint of the person voice, which can then do again on the voice side deep faking. But now you're sending a text of uh, who is go uh, talking what and then with the proper diarization, like you had the subtitles for the movies, who said when what, you can do a really good uh, denoising and really clean talk through any type of the network. Now, diarization is really uh, a key issue here. Who said when and what? Well, not what, who said when, uh, so that you can achieve this and start spreading it. So it can be a, a separate channels, it can be in the same documents, depending how you want to uh, trace this one. And as I already mentioned, the biggest issue is that I will not, ah, I will be able to show it. This type of overlaps where two different speakers are talking at the same time, and this becomes a little bit issue for, or complex issue for uh, voice separation over audio. Now, uh, historically, this uh, type of speaker separation was done modularly. 
you will have multiple different networks, each of them doing a separate task. You do a voice activation to start defining this is a person A, B, C. You really don't care that this person is named whatever. You just need to know how many of them it's a difference. So yes, you can use also this for authentication purposes that you authenticate based on a timbre of the voice or a depth and harmonics, how each person have separately, but it's mostly that you can say, ah, okay, I have four persons talking at the same time, or now I have one, two, three, whatever, and it will start doing uh, separation. So that's your voice activation. After that, you will start, start with ASR, so your speech recognition, and then later on, the diarization, that you start keeping track timings. So especially if you want to replay it, that you have a timing, etc. So this is essentially three different uh, networks doing three different tasks. Uh, first re research paper started this year, uh, near June, started to move into multitask frameworks. So, uh, ah, well, I have a little bit input before that one. Uh, what we else did is uh, one of the colleagues did on Monday talk about music separation we are doing as well, so that you throw any type of uh, music inside of it and it starts spre spreading it into instruments. It started with uh, uh, decomposing additional networks which are available, MobileNet and uh, ResoNet, so that we can achieve a little bit better results and quality of the outputs across different instruments. I just wanted to uh, remember this is an additional relevant project which we are working. It's completely separate than a voice. It's more music related. It does not care about diarization, it does not care about speech to text translation, but it still has some aspects which should be potentially uh, useful later on. Now, uh, this is why I said that uh, font is really important. So, <laughs> a single speaker um, the, the rec recording, like in this case, what we are doing is, is you get a spectral analysis of your voice, of your speech, of your music, etc., etc., and then based on the different patterns, you can start identifying and spread, uh, spreading information. And from this, you will start also generating outputs, which are audio outputs. Uh, initial base ground or baseline from which we started is a word to vec or sorry, wave to vec, uh, which has first, let's say, state-of-the-art elements of combining multiple tasks for speech recognition in a single platform. It has still issues, so what we needed to do, one of the good parts is that it does really well on unlabeled data and it's open source. So everything we are showing here is based on open source technologies because there are uh, two, diff two really good algorithms available, but they are commercial one from Google, one from uh, Microsoft. They still lack some of the functionality, but uh, knowing how much they can invest and how fast, I think that they will solve it relatively fast. Now, uh, here we also start, and you see how it goes from the waveform, but you start adding different tasks in a single platform. So learning new language is quite easy when it's already pre-trained on the larger volumes of the data set. So it's just injecting, injecting new information but it still lacks capability about um, uh, voice activation, uh, about uh, ASR, and uh, later on diarization. This is something we needed to inject as a separate layers in the platform itself. So injecting, it started initially, well, it is a few layers, it's not one, with that functionality so that it can fingerprint the person. Then uh, this layer will feed in your ASR, and this layer later on uh, does a final output through text to text or the speech to text uh, component with diarization, element jointly. And again, font. <laughs> Unfortunately, you don't see, but it does through the pooling and aligning layer on top of the layer so that you can get a single functionality, well, multiple tasks from the single platform itself. Now, this became baseline. It has an issue with, it has relatively, uh, I wouldn't say, uh, good, but uh, nearly good result in a uh, word error rate and uh, diarization error. So it has decent results, but it's not, not still good enough. So what we started is uh, try to see what Whisper from OpenAI can offer, because Whisper is now a technology uh, which came in September, and it has quite a lot of functionality. And if you already track what OpenAI does through all of those uh, different frameworks, you know that they are investing on the training side, on the data set side, 
all of those important elements. And uh, this is essentially a transformer-based model, which means as soon as you do something, it's easy to pass the knowledge on a new language and pass the knowledge on something else. And it, is, it, it has a really huge data set in the background. They trained it on 680,000 hours of the multi-language uh, multi speech. And even on a smaller, let's say, languages, it, it behaves really, really good. But it still uh, uh, has an issue with the separation. It's robust to noise, which uh, wave to, uh, to uh, word is not. So wave to uh, vec is not. So it has some robustness. And I think that uh, this morning when uh, Professor Luca did the talk, you saw that if you want to have a big environment and a robust environment, you need a lot of parameters. And that's the biggest difference between uh, wave to vec and uh, whisper algorithm. So that they have a huge uh, set of uh, features which are activating in the background. Now, robustness is really important here, but it's still, okay, it's still open source, which allows us to do a lot of the things. And one of the elements which they do out of the box is this type, end to end. You can't get a separate, uh, let's say, waveform of the talk, but you'll get as a text representation. You can embed directly uh, speech translation so that it does through, or language translation so that it does immediately diarizing in multiple different languages, which becomes sometimes handy, not always, but it uses a different set of activation functions, how it goes through layer, through layer, through layer to achieve the results. Now, again, to achieve similar, let's say, or better results, we needed to extend it. We did the same type of uh, injecting layers. Again, you needed a really good uh, voice activation, you needed a, a, uh, diarization, and ASR so that you can get all of those elements separately. Now, it is robust to nose and um, it behaves relatively good. I, I wouldn't say great. Uh, it still uh, has some issue with uh, transformer models and how transformer models tend to go in a looping during, during the processing. And I'll show you on one example if we'll be able to play it. Uh, where this becomes obvious task. But again, this has a big issue with the voice overlapping. It's still doing some of the spectral elements in the background, but when two or more voices overlap, it becomes a little bit hazy and then it can start creating its own words uh, and producing results, whatever they are. Let's see, we'll be able to play it. So he starts off with the girl. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Maybe they'll start screaming. So it's uh, a recording from the meeting. No, no it's not important. So you can uh, uh, you can uh, turn it down. So essentially, this is what we get. It correctly identified that there are four person talking. So you have speaker one, two, three, four, and it shows each of them separately. And this is where that uh, CPWER metrics comes in handy because it tracks each of those. Can somebody spot issue here in results? Yeah. And in something which we didn't hear, it's just once. And then transformer model <laughs> went into loop and generated multiple different outputs. And from the other side, do some uh, two person talking, started inventing words. Yeah, it's just one letter, but it's not proper word. So this is something which needs to be also fixed. But in, uh, let's say, from the high level, it's relatively good translation, what uh, somebody says. So now applying NLP on top of it and trying to fix sentences that they make sense, this will become even better. Now, we know that people are not talking constantly, let's say, meaningful. Uh, it does not, know, it does not mean that uh, NLP will fix it, but uh, it has a good chance at least to try to align it with the language. Now. As uh, if, if you remember, I told you, try to remember that uh, additional projects we are doing, which uh, focuses on music separation. This is now our element which we try to, uh, uh, let's say, inject instead of the uh, original voice activation functions, that we really split this on the voice level. Split every voice separately. And then this becomes a relatively trivial issue to solve because now, you don't have a multi-speaker issue, you have a single speaker issue. Every waveform, it's a single, uh, a single speaker essentially, and you cover it as such. And I think 
That's it.